Sarah Leah Whitson serves as the executive director of the Human Rights Watch Middle East and North Africa Division. Uh, Sarah, I want to start off by asking you about when these kinds of photos uh, get attention uh, and they're circulated on social media. Um, is there any kind of change that you see in terms of people interested in that particular conflict? I think it definitely has the effect of generating a great deal of interest and shock and horror and collective horror around the world in a way that hopefully translates into political pressure on the actors uh, to pause and think about this destruction that's being caused uh, for uh, very baffling reasons and in this case affecting victims like Omran Daknish, the boy in the video. Um, there is a sense uh, that it affirms our collective humanity because nobody can look at the picture of this boy or watch the video of this boy emerging from this rubble and not feel horrified and ashamed that what's happening in Syria has been happening under our watch. Uh, some people on Twitter, Sarah, are reacting to the photo with this sentiment saying, quote, the dead Syrian boy on a beach, the bloody Syrian boy in an ambulance, icons for a moment, then world looks away, killing continues, hashtag Syria. What's your reaction to that, Sarah? Well, my reaction to it is it's the truth. It's the truth that we see. It's the truth of what happens to Syrians who flee, which is they wash up dead on shores. It's a reflection of the Syrians who remain uh, is imaged in this little boy. Um, and I don't think the public can really believe um, that that shock and horror will immediately translate into change. Um, what we want to push people to do and think about doing is to take their outrage uh, and take their horror and to push it to political action, whether in Russia, whether in Syria, whether in the United States, whether in Saudi Arabia, to push those who are at the table of this war uh, to come to negotiated solution which unfortunately right now is the only way that's going to suspend this horror that we're seeing in these images. Uh, speaking of uh, Russia, we are seeing memes created of the little boy that show him in between Vladimir Putin and President Obama and him at what looks like a UN meeting. From your position, Sarah, I wonder what you think the role of social media has been and can be when it comes to sharing uh, the conflicts and the realities of these conflicts that happen all around the world? Well, I think it's twofold. Uh, on the one hand, it's a gauge uh, of public sentiment and, and uh, uh, an opportunity for the public at large to chime in on these important policy issues um, that in prior generations the ordinary public had no voice in, no say in. There has been an incredible democratization of commentary and discussion about uh, international policy matters, domestic policy matters that really didn't exist before. And that can only be a good thing if people feel like they are more actively engaged, uh, actively contributing to thinking about what is happening in, in even remote areas in the world. On the other hand, it's also incredibly frustrating and frightening because the international community, international citizens, in a sense, feel like they're sitting at the table um, but can see that there's no progress being made, no change being made, and perhaps a real sense of uh, shock and, and, and outrage that their voice doesn't actually matter. So I wonder as well, Sarah, whether you think there's the risk of people becoming desensitized uh, to these kinds of images because there is this technology that does exist now which allows them access uh, to this information in a way that they just haven't had in the past. You know, on the one hand, I would say, sure, that's a risk, and we know it's a risk, uh, and, and it's a, something that people have been talking about for a very long time. If you advertise horrors and you show horrors repeatedly, people become immune to them. On the other hand, the reality is that this image of Omran is on your broadcast today and is something that everybody is talking about um, because we haven't become desensitized to it. We cannot look at the image of this boy and sit by and stand by and feel nothing and do nothing uh, and express nothing. Uh, this photo, as you just noted, obviously strikes a chord with a lot of people. I wonder, Sarah, what it is that you see when you look at that photo? Um, well, I, I have to say that I know children that age who are still living in Aleppo 
and it horrifies me and it um, shocks me and it scares me. Um, and I, uh, I, I think I'm still just so shocked by this image of this boy uh, who's living this horror and doesn't even know why. He doesn't even know who's fighting who or why they're fighting what. All he knows is that he's suffering the consequence. Do you believe that that image has the power to change anything in Syria? Well, you know, uh, I should say it should have the power to change a lot. Uh, I hope it will motivate the policymakers who are sitting around the negotiating table, will motivate President Assad, will motivate uh, the rebels in eastern Aleppo to look at the image of this boy and realize that after so many years of this war dragging on, this is not the way to solve serious problems. All right. Sarah Leah Whitson, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.